But y'all, if that guy and fellas, if you are listening, that girl does not line up with your values and your morals and what you, um, you know, stand by, you're going to realize who the real influence is. And it's not you. What's up, y'all? Welcome back for another episode of Succeeding in Singleness. And yeah, my name is Janae. I am your host of this podcast. And look, the one thing we're going to do on this podcast is succeed, okay? Why? Because I'm not giving you another choice. I'm going to make sure you thrive because God wants you to thrive as well. And I don't take this role lightly because I know what it looks like to be super frustrated when it comes to dating and you just end up doing saying whatever and not really meaning it sorry let me get comfortable um we end up doing and saying things that we really don't mean i do not want to see that from you all especially during the season of life and of course we call it a season Uh, we just got to be honest so for some of us it may be forever and i did not want to say that so early in the podcast but that's just a real thing like being okay with where God has you is really our first focus should be our only focus honestly of just being content and trusting where God has us is exactly where we should be and because we because we can manipulate whatever we want to manipulate to happen for us but we know we know better okay we know that we should be following after God and exactly what he wants us to do concerning our lives so I'm so glad that you are tuning in today to listen to this episode. So this particular episode is about identifying counterfeits. Yeah. Yeah. Now, of course, you know, there are so many other ways to identify and you can definitely share yours down below if you are watching via video. I wrote a nice little list, but at the same time, if something else comes up, we are going to name that off as well. I identify a counterfeit as someone that just wasn't it. Not to say they wasn't a good person, not to say they didn't have the same values as you, but unfortunately, they just didn't work. It's a counterfeit. It's just somebody that's just not tag not it. Yeah, a counterfeit can be just somebody that does not want you. And it's hard to hear. But they don't want you and you are trying to figure it out and you're like, no, like they're saying things, but like you got to really read in between the lines. And sometimes the lines say enough, but we just still try to stick around. Um, But also to a counterfeit can be somebody that just honestly is just they're not showing up the way you need them to show up or the way they should show up for you. And that's just not going to work. Okay. now we also need to realize that we can be counterfeits, too. We can. Okay, y'all don't want to hear that too soon. Okay, all right. All right, so right now we're going to dive into girl, girl, girl. Let's get real. This is where I share a story that relates to the overall topic that we are discussing. My story about, uh, my story, my story. A counterfeit, counterfeit. So um, the one story that I can think of initially is honestly a lot of them but so yeah i'm gonna just talk about just a general statement a general like overview of like how i used to pick guys to date and to get to know y'all i will say this a lot of guys are very attractive once again y'all already know how i feel god knows what he's doing okay they be looking how they looking and i enjoy every second i do but not less than that's wrong get yourself together but just admiring what god has created so you're like okay that person is fine cool 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 now when it comes to actually dating them though dating them is a different story just because they're cute does not mean you should date them okay i know that's hard to hear because you're like yo but if i'm attracted to him he gotta be potential at some point right like he has to be an option right no And I think that's where it hits the most. (laughs) That does not equal that. And I dealt with a lot of counterfeits because of those decisions that I made just because of how they look. I will say that, I don't want to say this number, at least 98% of them, (laughs) oh no, let me be nicer to myself. 95% of them were not really living the way that 
I would want somebody that I'm dating to live. Um, that I'm, you know, we don't match up is what I'm getting at. And so I definitely dated dudes that were not frequent in the church. They said they went to church or some say, you know, church, they had church hurt, not discounting that. Everybody has their different stories, but just different things where it's like, okay, you're experiencing these things or you haven't been to church, all this type of stuff. But is that something where I should be truly connecting myself to? That is where it got a little, a little, a little hazy. Because <laughs> I was like, but they're cute. Lord, like my, me, I can be an example. This is when I was younger, not when I got older. But I was like, I can be an example and he can eventually change his life. Well, uh-oh, that's not the mindset to have. He should come to the Lord. He should come to Jesus on his own because of his his wants and desires, not because you manipulated it in some kind of way for him to start to walk with Christ. Now, this obviously isn't a bad thing if they come to Christ, but just being mindful of like, what are we doing to get the attention of somebody? You did some things to make it make sense and it actually ended up working. That's the part that hits, okay? Like, because ladies... Let's be real. We know exactly what to do to get what we want for the most part, when it, especially when it comes to guys. And I, um, I realized that I was, I had that mindset at the, like when I was a little bit younger, like, no, if I just like hang out with him, he's going to see like, you know, God is real. Um, church is not that bad. Like church is not bad. All these different things to convince myself to stay with this person. And what happens with that is that you also are showing God that you don't truly trust that he can bring you the right mate, the right spouse. And when I realized that, I, I had to get myself together. I was like, okay, wait, who am I really putting my trust in? Who am I really relying on when it comes to dating? And it should be the Lord. I'm like, the person that formed me, why am I not trusting him? The person that created me, why am I not trusting him? The person that made me in his image and likeness, how am I not trusting him and bringing me the right person? That's because I just wanted to do my own thing. I wanted to be impatient. And it's hard to hear because you're like, you shouldn't talk about yourself like that. Okay. But what I'm getting at is, is that let's just be real about where what's really going on. I just want us to be real and honest. And so that's what I'm doing right now when I'm saying these things is that I knew that I just, in those moments, I felt like I could potentially lose this person if I don't make it make sense in my head initially, because sometimes it has to start in your head. Cause like you can already tell, but sometimes you're like, well, no, if I stay a little bit longer, like it's going to make sense. No, that's not how this works. And so I ended up dating a lot of counterfeits because of my thinking. And as I got a little bit older, um, especially towards like the end of college going into, you know, adulthood, adulthood, I really had to recognize like, Janae, you can't just be dating anybody, you know, how you want to live your life, you know how you want your life to look like, especially in the future. And you also don't want to have to go through these healing phases over and over again. Y'all know those moments where you finally, like you meet a person, but you know it's not, mm, 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 I don't know. And then next thing you know, now you, now you go into the Lord asking for forgiveness asking like, Lord, help me heal through this. Like, Lord, mend this, mend my heart. You came for the broken hearted, like help me in this, all these type of things when really we knew the answer way before we decided to go further with this person. And I have a lot of different healing phases that I went through and I'm like, bruh. So after the one I had not too, too long ago, like a few years ago, I told myself, don't you ever, don't you ever, ever put yourself in that position again i do not want to heal because of my disobedience i do not want to have to go through a healing phase because of my disobedience i don't want to go have to go through a healing phase because of my own fleshly desires because i didn't put god's wants and desires concerning me first i put mine's first and i always see where it gets me it only gets me so far and i always end up having the same exact results no man, no commitment, no relationship, okay? Situationships one-on-one, -on -one, okay? The class I could start, I could start that class. I created a whole program, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I don't want that. Um, so after a while I had to start talking to myself like, hey, how can we get better? How can we do better? When it came to counterfeits, what I would notice is that I started to 
not mention the Lord as much. I started to not, you know, stay in 10 toes down on certain things that I say I would never do or, or say or think or, you know, just be around. And that those type of things start to happen because we begin to let our guards down. When it when the word tells us to guard our hearts, that's for a reason. Really take take hold of what comes in and what goes out. And the reason I say what goes in is because what goes in your heart is just everything that's in it flows out. So what have you been feeding yourself? What have you been telling yourself? What have you been around and indulging in? All those things matter, especially when you're dating somebody. What flows out of me is what I want to reflect that Christ wants for me. And so when I realized that I'm starting to do things that I never did or used to do that I got, you know, like re uh, delivered from and all that type of stuff, I'm like, how I get here again? What, what, what we doing? So I got to the point where I said, Janae, no more. No more. And y'all, it can be as simple as, hey, I used to be on time for things and I don't do that no more. Like, because I'm hanging with you. Now I have like my, my uh, me being on time has gone out the window. It can be the little things, y'all. And those type of things are seeds. And then you start looking up and saying like, I can't even, I don't even know who I am anymore. I can't even identify myself truly in the mirror anymore because you started to indulge in those things. And so a lot of people think like, oh, I can go ahead and date this person because, you know, I'm strong in my faith. I'm strong in what I stand for. But y'all, if that guy and fellas, if you are listening, that girl does not line up with your values and your morals and what you, um, you know, stand by. You're going to realize who the real influence is. And it's not you. It's just not. Because we are not to just hang around, be around just anyone, especially as believers. We are to, you know, be a witness to others, but to actually try to do close relationship with, especially intimate, you know, like, you know, uh, romantic relationships with people. And they're not lined up with the word of God. Unfortunately, we begin to be influenced by them more than they are influenced by us. I'm letting you know right now, though, that is something to not play with. A lot of people are like, well, no, like I can or no, I, I know somebody that. I don't know, because once again, some things can go be, start off real good and then go real bad real quick. So just being mindful of like who you surround yourself, because that will become your influence. That will become how your life will look in the years to come. So if that person is really not who you want, to, like just be real about that. So that's the type of stuff I was experiencing. I was just like, you know, Janae, this is not you. So be for real and let them go, okay? I told myself that I would never try to connect with somebody, you know, on a romantic level. And you know, romantic means, you know, dating them and, you know, eventually marriage, all that type of stuff. I won't line myself up with somebody like that because I just didn't like how I felt after that. It is so important. And I I want them to be so in love with God that that is their number one priority, period. And it sounds hard to say because I first didn't understand that because I was like, okay, they can love the Lord, but like, what about me? <laughs> but you want somebody that's wholeheartedly um, having a, a strong relationship with God because that spills over to you and how they treat you and how they show up for you and how they love you. And I, I desire to have that, but I also have the desire to give that back to my person too. So I really make sure that when I am dating somebody, I'm like, hey, you gotta be focused. But I feel like, I don't know what this topic really is, but it's supposed to be talking about identifying counterfeits. And so that's where we're gonna focus on. But I still hope y'all got something from those stories. Um, like, like I said, I did a blanket type of like summary of how I've been dating. Um, but I do want to break down how to identify a counterfeit. So these are from, once again, from my personal experiences. And it's also to some people that I've heard online that may have said certain points. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I definitely agree to that. Definitely see that as well. There are probably so many more I could name, but this is what we're going to do for this particular episode. Okay. Number one, they are not consistent. Now, you may hear this a lot like, you know what? Yeah, that's a given. How dare he not be consistent? How dare he not realize that I am that girl, still that girl, been that girl? 
But a lot of people, they're just not consistent. And you know, the reason I say, and the reason I put this as one of the points is because at first when I heard cons- they're not consistent, I'm like, well, they don't owe me anything. We just met. They don't owe me to be consistent. Like we just, you just got here and I just got here and I don't want that many, I don't want that type of responsibility when I just met you. I still add it to the list because there's, but there's still some truth in them being, not being consistent. Because for me, if I'm not consistent with somebody, it's really because I don't want them. So I don't, I don't need to talk to you. I don't have the the desire to talk to you, but sometimes too, I'm not talking to you often because I just met you. Like I don't, I don't necessarily, this is my thinking. I don't necessarily owe you all of my time just yet. We can gradually get to know each other and see how it goes after that. But consistency really does matter once you realize how often, you know, how long this has been at this point. Like, yeah, is he at some point, brother? Yeah, let's start being consistent because you saying you want this or that. You say you see this and that with us. Well, then let's let's show it. Let's let's bring it. And that's the same for you. Show the same energy. Okay. Another thing is that they don't ask you questions or in-depth questions that will allow them to truly get to know you. I was this person. I barely, rarely ask questions. I'm like, you're cute. You say you love the Lord? Great. That's rock. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't need anything else. But, and if I did finally ask questions, it's only because of they had asked me a question or said something. And I'm like, oh, yeah, well, yeah, hold on. Tell me more about that. But not intentionally saying like, hey, these are some of the questions that I want to get to know about this person so that I can see if it's something for me to move forward with or is this just a friend or is this something I need to end? So really identifying, hey, where does this person really land in my life? I would definitely say that you have to ask questions. You, If you have to write down something, go ahead and do that so that you are pulling these questions out here and there. Or if you hear what they're saying, pull from that even more. Don't let it just be a statement and keep it moving. No, ask them more about what they just said. I would definitely say that I was terrible at that. Another one I would say too is that their morals on their morals are not the same. We talked about that earlier. Your morals, your values, your Christian beliefs, all these ty- these things really matter for you to be able to excel in a relationship with somebody and walk hand in hand. We're not, he's not going to be in front of you. You're not going to be in front of him hand in hand and deciding how this life is going to look for both of y'all to exist in. And if these things are not lined up, because what happens is from my, me here, especially from my uh, married people, is like you can have, people can eventually have arguments and disagreements about certain things that they thought they discussed, but realized they never really discussed or somebody decided to brush it under the rug. And you're like, no, that actually does really matter to me. And so don't be afraid to speak up when it comes to what you want and need. I did that recently with somebody. They had certain stance on something. I was like, hey, I disagree with that. I get your perspective, but I disagree with that. Letting them know like, no, that won't rock over here. Not with me. Um, another one with identifying counterfeit or like just that this situation is just not really clicking is that you're, you feel confused. God is not an author of confusion. God would not put us in positions or have us be, um, have us placed with somebody that's going to cause confusion. That's going to make us feel confused about our role in their life, how they see us together. No, God is not going to do that. Okay. And I, and I believe that. My God knows what he's doing concerning me. If you don't know what you're doing concerning me, it's not going to rock. It's not going to rock. No, we should never get to a place where we're confused. Now, there's a difference. With, now, some of y'all, we a little antsy. Take your time. Sit back, relax, relax, relate, release type of energy, right? Because we don't want to mess up something because because we're anxious about something. We're anxious about this relationship. Um, that's a different thing. But when we're talking about you're just confused about if he really likes you or you're confused about, okay, do you really want to hang with me? Or you're confused about, okay, do you really love God? Or is this just like a phase? Like you just trying to show up because I said I love the Lord and you just think I'm attractive. Those are the type of things where I mean confused. Like you need to be super sure about certain things, which is why it goes back to asking questions. And look, most of us have our answers. We just don't want to accept the answers they've given us. But I feel it. I feel it. Another thing I want to say is that they're not a man of their word and for fellas, like she doesn't, she doesn't keep what she say. Like she, you just saying stuff, but you're not really following through. And that type of stuff matters when you're dealing with somebody. Like we don't want people that's just 
Like, be for real. Come on now. Those are the things that came to mind when I came to um, really trying to discover or, like, you know, identify a counterfeit. Um, once again, my number one thing is that they don't love the Lord. We've already talked about that earlier, which is why I didn't really hone in for it during the points. But, like, they their relationship with God matters the most. How they show up and communicate with God really, like I said, it spills over to how they do the rest of their work. And for me, if they do actually do the rest of their work and their relationships better than they have a relationship with God, that is something to pay attention to. And that's the same thing with us. We should not get to a point where because we want a relationship so bad that we end up putting them before God. We end up cherishing them, stewarding over them, talking to them, making time for them more than we make time for our Lord. Okay. Spend time with Jesus. Spend time with Jesus. Okay. Spend time with him. Because guess what? This helps us identify a counterfeit. When you spend time with the Lord, he is able to really speak to you even clearer concerning who you are dating. You can be, Lord, what's up with this one? He fine, but what's up with him? And the Lord will, Holy Spirit will tell you with the quickness, okay? What this person is all about. And we have to do our part in sitting and not moving too fast, but also not moving. So not my... We have to do our part with not moving too fast with relationships and getting into these relationships and really listening to the Holy Spirit. But we also, once we get our answer of like, no, that's not it, to not move so slow with removing ourselves from that uh, situation, that relationship or that, you know, that person. All that matters, okay, when it comes to dating. I did not use as many, I did not use many scriptures in this. I'll put some on the screen that I did kind of quote. But get in the word concerning how God wants you to live this life and you will know exactly how you should move and groove. The Bible has been set up properly for us to really know how to live this life. So yeah, in Matthew 18 verses 19, it says that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of the father of my father, which is in heaven. So yeah, you want somebody that you can agree with. You want somebody that you can be on one accord with. That definitely matters. Uh, we also talked about guarding your heart. But yeah, so in a, in a couple of areas, he talks about guarding your heart. And so and even in Proverbs 4, verses 23, it says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. But it mentions that a couple of times about just guarding your heart. Guard your heart. You know, we didn't talk about this, but you know, you already know this about being unequally yoked. We are not to just join ourselves with anybody. When you think about a yoke, they they have to be level for them to walk properly. They have to be on the same level for them to be able to walk and move forward. If not, they are stuck or they're going in a circle. All these type of things going the wrong way. So yeah, I really hope you got something from this episode. These type of topics are needed and necessary because we want a relationship. Everybody don't want one, but you know what I'm saying? Like I want one. So I want to make sure that I'm doing this right. Um, but also being able to live this out with you all. Um, and really have a community of people who are just like, hey, girl, yeah, girl, I get what you mean. Like, mm -hmm, I have that same story. So leave it down below if you are watching via video and, and share this video with someone that you think would be super helpful for them to hear. But also, too, if you are listening on the podcast, share this link with someone as well. All right. So I'll talk to y'all in the next episode. Peace.